I think the challenge all of his physicians are dealing with is data overload. And probably that is being felt very acutely in radiology more than in other areas. When I'm on a clinical day and I'm at the computer reading and scan, so we interpret images, come up with a diagnosis, have to write reports. I probably look at over 100,000 images in a day, and that's just gonna get worse. Okay, my name is Ellen Grant. I'm a radiologist at Children's Hospital in Boston, and I'm a professor of pediatrics and radiology. I also run a research group called the Fetal Neonatal Neuroimaging and Developmental Science Center. Ideally, where we want to go with medicine, when a patient shows up on the door, I want all of his prior information preloaded. I want to do a quick comparison to any prior history he's had and do a big data search of how the other patients like this have evolved, what was the best treatment, can I use our volume of knowledge to better treat each individual patient. So to get into the concept of precision medicine. Patients get more consistent and accurate diagnoses. As we start to leverage these tools, we can converge our practices as to what we call abnormal and normal. Because if we're not spending so much time looking for the abnormalities, we can spend more time structuring how we interpret them. We're trying to bring everybody up to more of an even playing field. What if it was possible for some computer program to look at these images with them and automatically flag images that might deserve better attention? So my name is Rudolf Pinal. I am a staff scientist at Boston Children's Hospital, and I do biomedical research. Oh, Rudolf is a collaborator of mine. He's been working with me almost as long as I've been in Boston. 2003. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as luck would have it, um, Ellen was looking for a postdoc. I nabbed him to help me create an infrastructure to make advanced imaging analysis available to clinicians. She wanted data to be collected from the hospital database and accessible on her computer. I began writing this multitude of scripts to try and manage these things. It just became tedious. You may be thinking I was burning the midnight oil, slaving away at my desk all hours of the night. But in actual fact, that's not how it happened. There was no single eureka moment in Chris. It happened progressively, slowly, over many, many years of work. We just wanted to make our work easier. Instead of having it in a terminal, why don't we try and put a front end onto it? Why don't we try and do a web-based front end onto the system? And this became the first iteration of what would become CRIS. 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 And it stands for the CRIS Research Integration System. CRIS is trying to solve two challenges. The one challenge is to make research more collaborative and to have research occur on computing platforms that aren't available in typical institutions. And the other challenge to CRIS is to get results of computation very quickly to accelerate clinical work. So then the question became, where will Chris live? That's when I talked to Iran about putting Chris on the Massachusetts Open Cloud. 